It was mid-afternoon. My cameraman, Harry Gottlieb, and I had just exited the uh, lobby of the International Hotel in downtown Kandahar, where most foreigners stay. Toyota pickup pulls up in front of us. Um, six or seven heavily armed Talib get out. Suddenly, uh, one of them seized Harry while another one uh, removed the camera. Several men then grabbed me from behind and Harry. I have no idea where, but when the truck finally stopped and the blindfolds were removed, we found ourselves in the Afghani countryside. And as he pointed toward the mouth of the cave, The first thing that struck me and Harry was the incredible supply of old equipment that was in there. Radios, guns, gas masks, ammunition, handheld missile launchers. There was even a belt of dynamite sticks for a suicide mission. 500 pound bombs and outdated ordnance just lined up and left in the aisles, all live. And then there he was. He was in the middle of preparing for our interview. He tried on five jackets before he got one that was clean and pressed just right. And then he spent a half an hour putting on his own makeup so he had the look he wanted and it looked perfect. And the whole time he was arguing in Arabic with his brother-in-law, Abdul. Harry understood a little of the dialect and said it was about him not being able to get his headdress to look right. About the cave being too dirty. And then he turned to Harry and said that if the camera wasn't on him at all times during the interview, he was going to cut off our hands. Then he put his arm in a sling, got real calm, looked straight into the camera and said, I'm ready. And then he led us off to what he called the interview part of the cave. But he was really on Abdul's case about keeping the cave clean. And then every once in a while he'd just stop, turn to the camera, and he'd run off about how he was going to rip off America. One was with a weird credit card Ponzi scam. And then he'd go right back to walking and arguing with Abdul. Unfortunately, that didn't turn out too well because several times they argued so much we got lost, which made them argue more, which made him more and more paranoid about me and Harry. Till finally he told Abdul to put on the suicide belt. At that point, I was trying to remember the way back out. Then he announced, during our interview, if the camera was aimed anywhere but on him, Abdul would blow us all up. And the interview began. This may come as a surprise, but life in a cave is very costly. There is food, clothing, heating, air conditioning, ammunition, the tiny little books with tiny little printing, all hand done, not cheap. Because of this, I'm thinking very seriously of turning myself in and collecting the $25 million reward. That plus a book deal, and I'll have enough to hire Johnny Cochran. Personally, I like military tribunals. They are quick, predictable, and efficient. You cut off a hand, you throw some stones, it's done. I have many doubles, I lose doubles, and my people are always seeking new doubles. But I myself am not a double. I am a single. On the other hand, I can do imitations. I do a great imitation of Mullah Omar. It's actually quite accurate, and it makes life underground much funnier, I'm told. I hear it's quite accurate, if you know him. Actually, Saddam Hussein is the best imitator. He does an Arafat that's amazing. As far as my hobbies are concerned, I like to pack, move, unpack, repack, move, 
unpack. I find it very relaxing. Also, cave wall spackling is a particular favorite of mine. You know that guy from this old house? The man's a genius. You can't tell me he's not Syrian. I will say one final thing about that subject. I would like to apologize for everything I've ever said, and I would like to deny everything I've ever done. Now, can we please move on? If you don't cover up women, then you must rape them. If you don't rape them, then you must cover them up. But we find that uncovered, unraped women demand an education, and if you educate women, they learn how to avoid being raped or covered up. And if you can't rape uncovered women, then you have to rape men. Is that your idea of enlightened Western liberalism, raping men? Is that what you want, the victimization of men? My belief systems prohibit depictions of the human form in all representational art forms, which include movies and television. However, I did enjoy uh, Jaws. I didn't go near the water for a year after I saw it, which, I must admit, is not that hard in Afghanistan. You are forbidden to watch this. This is a representation of the human form. It's television. You are forbidden to watch this tape. Well, you can watch it for a little bit at a time. Maybe you can peek. I don't know if you can peek. This cave thing is getting old pretty fast. Bali, the Greek islands, and of course, Paris. I'm thinking urban and temperate. I will soon part my hair on the side, wear an Armani suit, silk shirts, penny loafers, lose the beard, rhinoplasty, major long bone adjustments, the usual. Plus, I'd like to spend a year in India. They have a great film industry, and I'd like to write and direct for a while. Move the camera is what I'd like to do. Calcutta has already offered final cut. I have an epic cave story that must be told, and I also have a great cave sitcom idea. It's called Open Sesame. It's a cross between Alibaba and the 40 Thieves and the Honeymooners. Pow, Alice. I've already had some interest from Fox. Calm down. Calm down. Keep the camera rolling. Everybody calm down. I would like to show you an exercise that will calm your fear of the bombs. Close your eyes. Open them. Look up. Look to the left. Look to the right. Cross your eyes. See? I didn't even blink. We are far deep enough underground that we don't have to worry. The bombs will not touch us, we will not die, but if we do, that's okay too. Abdul, we're not going to die. Put that down. If you don't put that down, I'm going to cut your hand off. Put that, all right, cut off his hand. Remember about the tea, Abdul. That was very hot tea. A thumb and now a hand. You learn very slow. Everybody start packing. We're moving until we meet. Bless you. Thank you.